Hello, this is Nate Hofer, the artist of the photography series One and a Half Acres, images from Missouri's 150 decommissioned missile silos. Uh, today is April the 30th, 2021, and I'm at, I'm at um, the West Branch of the Kansas City, Kansas Public Library, libraries, and I'm in the gallery, and I'm about to give just a brief impromptu um, artist's walkthrough of the 12 pieces hanging here in the gallery. Uh, so, the first one is from 2019, fall of 2019 when most of these photos were taken. Um, this one is in Boonville, Missouri, uh, a split property uh, between a residence on the north and a farm on the south. Um, talking to the owner of the residence on, on the north side um, was a very interesting guy who uh, uses his portion of this uh, ICBM, former ICBM site for his dog. And we can see the dog house right here in the very top. Uh, this site, like many others, still retains the original uh, early 1960s security fence. Um, What's particularly interesting about this one and unique is that um, because it's a split property, there's another fence that runs diagonally through the property. Um, and so it makes it very clear like what each, where that line, that dividing line is and what the uses are for each side of that fence, you know, agriculture, farming on the south and then more of a, just a, a kept lawn on the north. One of my favorites. This one is one of two in the series um, from last year. This is from uh, taken July 5th uh, in Walker, Missouri. Uh, speaking to the owner of this property was really interesting and enlightening. He, he had grown up in the area and his life, he had pointed out, had really followed the life of the Minuteman program. Uh, he remembers as a boy seeing the Army Corps of Engineers surveyors um, plotting and planning where each of these would go. And uh, today he is one of the, the owners of the 150 decommissioned sites in Missouri. Um, he owned it while it was operational as an ICBM site and uh, told me quite a bit about like how that transition from from um, the Air Force ownership of the property uh, back to to his to his family's property um, obviously he uses it for agriculture the fence in this one is completely gone um, what is interesting is the fence poles, I didn't notice this till later, uh, are still here, or at least the corner poles, or maybe some of the, the fence poles. Um, to give you an idea how big those are, uh, those are three foot uh, cement blocks pulled up out of the ground. In many cases, these fences are still left intact. This one was, was pulled up by the owner um, so that he had more flexibility in the use of, of the property. Um, he, what's also unique about this one is that the owner continues to use the original electricity um, for his use that was originally for the ICBM site. Uh, other than that, yeah, the, uh, the original access road is still there and you can just see um, a faint uh, gate area where the two giant cyclone fence doors, gate, gate, gates, <laughs> gate doors would, would lock into the ground. Moving on to the third one, this one in Blairstown, Missouri, the other one I took during 2020 that's part of this series. Uh, this one was taken on election day um, and the here, the morning light is just screaming in, um, and 
and uh, producing these kind of these, these bright saturated colors on this fall morning. Here the the fence is obviously still there and the access road is still there but um, the fence is, is very overgrown so that um, that light coming in really leaves a deep shadow um, where um, the, where the fence is. Uh, there's a windbreak to the north causing those deep shadows just on the north side of the property. And of course, um, like a lot of these sites, uh, the owner uses it for hay bale storage. So we see several rows here, a few in the northeast corner along, just barely hidden in the shadow, a little bit of farm, uh, farming tool, or some kind of attachment to a tractor, I assume. Moving on over here. This is uh, one taken again in the fall of 2019. Um, actually, summer of 2019. This was one of the very first. This was, I think, the very first one I'd taken. Uh, and this one is in Lima. This is Lima 2 in Garden City, Missouri. Um, what struck me about this one is that at one time this was owned by a, a church in Garden City and they were selling fireworks. So here, there's a trailer, storage trailer, that's still there today. It says fireworks with a purpose. Community, church, missions, youth. Uh, I regretted missing seeing any fireworks being sold here. Um, curiously, if you look on Google Street View, um, you, you can see it was, uh, during fireworks selling season, and they had signs and a tent up, and were even um, advertising the fireworks as being sold from a former uh, missile launch site. Moving over here, well, there we go. Um, this is another one that's owned by a church, um, Mike Nine in Kingsville, Missouri. Uh, the day that I rolled past here, the, um, there was a groundskeeper watering and maintaining the, uh, the plants and landscaping around the church. It's a new building. It was very new in 2019. It wasn't even on Google Maps at that point. I'm not sure if it is at present, actually. I need to go back and look. Um, but So you can see some of the water stains in the new parking lot. Uh, this one's very interesting because um, where the former missile site was uh, is, is now the parking lot. The, the church had to be built off to the side of the missile site due to environmental reasons and restrictions by the EPA. Um, these sites are still checked on and regulated uh, regularly by uh, Missouri, um, either it's the EPA or, I'm not sure, I think it is the EPA. Uh, so, so, the, so you know, but what they were allowed to do was to use the missile site as a parking lot. One of the restrictions being that you can't dig below two feet into the into the the missile site um, due to toxins and chemicals left over from the 1950s uh, building materials um, when these were when these were built. Um, um, lost my train of thought there. Anyway, this is um, so. This one was was interesting to to shoot. Uh, so it was about ten o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, uh, and or or maybe it was Sunday. I don't remember. But down here, we have a portrait of the artist. If you know where to look, uh, the blue circle with the H is my drone. Uh, launch and landing pad and you can just make out me uh, in that shadow there and my white western hat moving along 
uh, in Blackburn, Missouri. This is Alpha 11, a very interesting site. Um, and it appears to be an automotive collection. This is a beautiful fall morning, just partly cloudy, so I had just, you know, not a lot of harsh shadows. The sun was behind a cloud at this point. And It looks like the field surrounding the site has been had been recently um, harvested. Again, this one has uh, the original 1960s security fence and access road off to the west side. One thing I didn't mention about the previous one was that uh, the only thing that is left over uh, visible is the access road to the north. Uh, the fence is completely gone here, um, and you might not otherwise, there would be no telltale signs that there was an ICBM at this, you know, 30 years ago here, except for that access road, which has been turned into, which is used today still for um, the parking lot. One of my favorites, Mike 11 in Centerview, Missouri. Uh, this was also on the 4th of July. I'm sorry, this was in July of 2019. Um, well, the sun had just come up in the east and was getting these nice raking shadows. Uh, this one is one of the most overgrown sites I've seen. Um, and I think beautiful because it's a testament to the just how um, how long this has been sitting here, you know, and, and evidence that that the uh, that the START treaty has uh, worked and are and are still working. Um, of course, no, nothing underground that that's you know reachable anyway. Um, each of these you know uh, have been demoed uh, shortly after the Cold War and buried over so there's really nothing to dig down to if you did if you did dig down you'd be breaking an epa rule for going more than two feet uh into the soil uh but if you did continue to dig i, I guess you would find um i assume rubble and some a lot of rock and concrete um these marshmallow like things are hay bales wrapped hay bales um, and again, the original access road is to the south. Uh, interesting here too, a number of these, and I think it's, I think it's here, uh, power lines still come in, uh, sort of like ghost power lines. I, they, you know, I assume there's no electricity coming in here, but nevertheless, you know, a number of these still have the original power lines coming in from the road. Just barely see the gates here. This is a particularly beautiful site, I think. Uh, moving over to the next one, Holden, Missouri, also in fall of 2019. This is Mike 7. Uh, this one is still, uh, one of, this is one of my favorites because, you know, it's, it's so evident what the landowner today is using it for. Um, in fact, on this day, uh, I happened to roll up right as there was some work being done here. Now, I'm not exactly sure what was happening, but there was a working loader um, loading into the back of this dumper. Again, this one has the original access road to the west side and the uh, original security fence. A lot of these time, a lot of the times, the security fences are just left in place. I'm not sure why the contractors or the Air Force didn't pull those out as decommissioning along with everything else. Um, I assume part of the reason was because it'd be so hard to pull, you know, uh, those those poles, all those poles out of this, out of the three feet of um, of cement uh, buried in the ground. 
you can hear me breathing through my mask. <laughs> and as I'm talking, I'm, I'm losing my breath. Um, okay, here we go. This, this is one of my favorites, Oscar 10 in uh, Knob Noster, Missouri. This one is to t today uh, being used as a, a business. Um, and had a very interesting conversation with uh, one of the owners uh, who lives not far from, from the site. Um, again, the original security fence is there and serves, you know, to, they, to I assume to uh, contain and protect all their uh, digging equipment. I think this was an earth moving business. Um, but, you know, it's so interesting to see how that original early 60s security fence still being used for something else today beyond the use of a nuke. Uh, the access road to the east is still there and along with um, the original gate entrance. In each of these, the, the nuclear warhead would have been um, seated in a silo in the lower left corner. Also, uh, I'll show the very last um, piece will demonstrate that. Um, this one uh, is in uh, Lamont, Missouri, Oscar three, and particularly interesting to me was was just how kind of um, I don't know what the word is not as dramatic as some of the others. Um, in fact, I lowered the drone camera just as low as I could to contain um, the fence line just inside the borders of the frame of the photograph to get as much detail as possible. It's a little hard to tell here, but one of my favorite points of this photograph is the power line. Um, this original power line coming in from the road to the west and then continuing down to the south side of the site, right here. And then just, it kind of dead ends. So I assume the power needed to be accessed from this side of the missile site. I don't actually know um, why that is. Um, yeah, again, just, agricultural use, the storage of hay bales, and, you know, the, the farmer can can just close up the gate, lock it up, you know. Two more to go. Alpha 6 in Concordia, Missouri. Uh, this was on Halloween morning. And it was, there was, it didn't snow a lot, but it snowed just enough to cover the ground. Um, and this one, you know, there's absolutely nothing left of the site. Um, no access road, uh, barely. You, if you knew where to look, you could see just where the access road came off the, the gravel road. Um, so I, that's where I parked my car and got out my camera. Um, and this, you know, I, I had to do a little sleuthing, and I think I'm close, but, <laughs> but it, it was so hard to tell just exactly where that um, site would have been. There's really no scarring in the ground at all. Um, the original landscaping that the Army Corps of Engineers um, included as part of the site design um, w was not there at all that I could tell. So I had to kind of just, you know, I had to study Google Maps and count, you know, the number of poles along the side of the road and kind of um, do some rough estimation about where it would be so that I could look at Google Maps, um, access the Google history, the Google satellite history, see where that was, you know, an, from an old satellite photo went back before it was back while it was, you know, you could still see, see the fence line. Um, and then, and then um, kind of just extrapolate in and plot where that would have been in, in this field. 
it's, and I think the white, you know, snow adds to the, the uh, sort of the, the, the spareness of this photo. It helps to, I think, um, give an idea of, like, underlines the idea that this thing is gone forever, except for the, uh, the leftover chemicals in the ground. Um, ironically, uh, the name of the road that this missile site um, was on, it, it was called Minuteman Road, uh, and it's still called that. You can, you can go, you can drive and, and see street signs on uh, the, the corners of, of the intersections and off the country roads there and see where it says Minuteman Road. All right, last one. Okay, if you've gotten this far in the video, I congratulate you. You've made it to the last one. <laughs> uh, this is not in Missouri. This one is in North Dakota. And the reason I went to the one, this one in North Dakota is that uh, it was part of a state historic site where it, a provision was written into the, the START Treaty to um, to preserve the above ground portion of this launch site. So, um, and the reason I included it in this, in the, with the other 11, which are all in Missouri, is just to underline the fact that Missouri does not have um, any kind of um, state historic site where, where locals or uh, others can go to to, to, to learn and experience this stuff. Um, none of these are really open to the public, um, but this one is, uh, and it's free. So if you can drive up to North Dakota, you can uh, you can you can take photos. You can put your your drone above this and take a photo, um, different from the one in South Dakota, which is owned and run by a national park where it's illegal to fly drones. Um, this one is is the only one where you can do that. So you can see, like I was mentioning before, uh, the lower sort of left quadrant of the site, you can see where the missile silo door would have slid back and could have been accessed for maintenance or launched. Um, so all these above ground features are still preserved here. It was kind of a beautiful uh, snowy day. Actually, it wasn't snowing this day, but there had just been a big snow uh, here. This is a bit of a self-portrait with the artist. There I am with my car, looking down at my controls, just right outside uh, the open gate here. This is, uh, the name of this is November 33. It's in Cooperstown, North Dakota. Highly advisable if you can make it to go visit I don't know if it's open right now to the public, honestly, because of the pandemic, but assuming there's a time again when we can all get, get out and see this stuff, um, I would say go do it. Actually, maybe now's the perfect time. Um, the day that I went, no one else was there other than the guy who runs the place, who is um, super helpful and uh, interesting to talk to. Um, I think that's it. So uh, if you can make it down to Kansas City, Kansas Public Library, West Branch, uh, you know, please do it. They'll let you in for 30 minutes and uh, you can uh, come in and see this stuff in person. Um, but if you can't, that's what this video is for. And uh, thanks for watching.